Hello, Sebastian. Hey, hello, everybody. Hi there. Uh, okay, I see some faces. Good morning. So, uh, morning. Just get this started. So, welcome to uh, my master class. We're also streaming live on various platforms. Good to see you. I see some people have their instruments. That's great. So, um, I'm going to mute everybody. And if you have questions, what you can do is uh, you can either um, unmute yourself and ask at any point, or you can uh, type it in the chat. Okay. Will I be able to record uh, this session? Uh, it will be, yeah, it will be recorded. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, let me just get back to the, so yeah, it will be recorded and you will be able to watch it um, afterwards. Okay, so we should, we should go on mute, is that? Uh, yeah, I will actually, uh, I will mute you, so, um, but you can unmute. Sebastian, I don't hear you. No sound. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry about that. So um, what I was saying is I'm, I'm going to share some exercises that have helped me um, strengthen my, my time and my rhythmic feel. And um, I'm also I'm going to share some, uh, some PDFs. And uh, maybe, maybe uh, um, to start out, um, I just want to mention that, and I always, uh, I always say this to my students too, that um, even if you um, never uh, use these, these rhythms on a gig or you, you, know, you don't uh, really um, you know, get into quintuplets and all this stuff, as an exercise, these, these are great to practice and just strengthen your overall feel. So, um, you know, sometimes I get the question of like, what, you know, how, how does this uh, relate to, um, you know, playing on a tune or um, uh, on a gig. So um, a, lot of, a lot of those exercises I look at as little uh, meditations. So um, they're just there, they have intrinsic value. You just sit with them for a while and um, uh, get into it and it'll, it'll, it'll strengthen your, your overall rhythmic concept. So, um, and, uh, you know, this is not an, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very selective. I'm, you, we're not going to be able to get through uh, everything in an hour, but, um, um, yeah, these are just some of my, uh, my favorite exercises. So, um, we're going to do some metronome exercises. We're going to do some um, um, exercises that are um, borrowed from the South Indian Carnatic system. We're going to get into odd group groupings of notes. And I'm also going to present some of my tunes that um, deal with these um, deal with these rhythms. Okay, so I might play an example um, 
either live or uh, from a recording. So, okay, so metronome exercises are very powerful. Um, I recommend getting a metronome that can go as slow as one beat per minute. And um, there's one that's called Metronomics. Um, it's, a, it's, it's an app and um, they can go down to, um, this, this app can go down to one beat per minute, which is very helpful for some of these exercises. There are even, there are some, um, some programs that go down to fractions, like 0 0.5 beats per minute, which, which is also super helpful for some of these uh, exercises. Um, somebody's asking if I'm using these in my daily uh, practice routine. Yes, some of them. Not all of them, but uh, I definitely cycle through them and come back to them, and some of them I use in my daily exercise. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, start out with just metronome on 60, which is sort of my go-to tempo. So um, 60 is a special tempo because it's exactly one second, right? So um, that being said, it's good to, um, you know, not always go to the same tempo. And, you know, sometimes I would go to 63, 66, or 80. Um, but first of all, what I want to get into a little bit is uh, clapping the triplets. So can you hear the metronome? Is that, is that? Okay. And um, also at any point, if the balance is off, just let me know, you know, guitar, voice, kind of amp is over there. So, you know, if, if, you, need, if you need me to turn something up, just let me know. So um, first of all, we don't, need, we don't need the instrument for this exercise, but the first thing I want, I want you to do is clap the, you know, the triplets. So the second triplet and the third triplet. Um, so yeah, we, I mean, you know, clapping. The first triplet would just be on the beat, right? The second triplet would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the third triplet would be one, two, three, four. Second and third triplet. So that's the first step. And those are already... Um, you can you can do that for a while and see how it really uh, what it does to your what the what it does to your feel. So these are very powerful, um, and if you if you try them, they become harder um, as you as you go up, as you turn the dial up uh, at faster tempos. So um, let's say you know tempo uh, tempo hundred, you know you know becomes becomes a lot harder suddenly so one two three four one third triplet second and third so Sit with that for a while and do that for a while and see what it does to you. And, um, you know, sometimes these rhythms, they mess with you. This is, you know, especially the, the last one, uh, the triplet on two and um, the second and third triplet is a very common uh, rhythm in African drumming. And it's easy to get turned around uh, when you listen to that for a longer period of time. So so do these for, for extended stretches. And then... Um, what what I like to do is um, have the metronome click be on those triplets, right? 
So instead of us clapping the triplet, the metronome will become the second and third triplet, right? So I'm going back to tempo 60, and um, I'm going to take my guitar and play along with it, but I'm going to make the metronome the third triplet, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. so on. So I was playing a slow blues. Um, again, you know, stay with one setting for a while and really get into it. So um, the second triplet is the hardest. So really work on that. So spend some time with that. Um, just hearing the metronome as the second triplet, right? So the third triplet we're kind of, uh, we're more familiar with because of the swing feel. The second triplet is the one that's that's really um, uh, tends to throw people off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. harder than uh, the click on the third triplet okay so highly recommend it uh, it's it's uh, it'll, it'll it'll drive you crazy but in a good way okay so so um, like I said look at it as a uh, as a meditation and um, try different tempos different settings um, on the metronome and get into those triplets and with metronomics and other metronome apps, you can even program them so that they click on the second and the third triplet. And then you have that, um, um, that groove that's very prevalent in, in African drumming uh, and you can play along with it. Um, so uh, moving on, um, we, could, we could spend um, a whole hour just on these exercises. Um, but I want to also, um, still on the topic of metronome exercises, uh, get into a different way of practicing time with the metronome. So um, I have a little chart here that I'm going to pull up. And uh, I'm going to share with you guys. Okay, so um, here's a here's a uh, metronome chart um, of tempos that can be divided um, down to uh, really low numbers. So for this, you need an app that goes down to uh, one beat per minute, like metronomics, right? So. Um, the idea here is to practice a tempo, um, let's say um, this one here, 240, 120, 80, 60, and so on. And um, this chart gives you the numbers that you need to set your metronome at to have it click on uh, every bar or every two bars or every three bars, every four bars, every five beats, every three beats. So um, 
I'm gonna it might sound a little confusing right now but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I mean so if I set the metronome at 120 um, let's say that's my that's my quarter note okay so and and let me know if you if, if this is not loud enough or anything so and um, you know you play along with it and then you set it at half speed and um, you get the half note um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to uh, to half of that um, and now we're at tempo 30 and that's three four one two 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 uh, yeah so we're yeah it's this one here so we started at, at tempo 120 and now the metronome is clicking on every bar right two three four Okay, so um, that's once per bar. So now um, it's starting to get interesting. So if we go down to 15, which um, you can't do that on a regular metronome, so you need one of those the apps or um, there are some websites or, or software for your, for your computer. That can do that. So now we're, we have a, we have a click on every other bar, right? Right, so um, if I had one of those one of those apps that go down to fractions, I could go to half of that, which would be seven point five, and have a click on every four bars. But um, this chart is helpful in uh, finding those tempos that you can uh, divide to the lower numbers. And um, what I also did, um, so you have an idea. Um, um, what these tempos actually mean. Um, I put some um, classic recordings here that, that are at that tempo, right? So that helps me in attaching, uh, you know, attaching a tune to a tempo. Um, it just uh, gives, me, gives me an idea what that tempo feels like. And um, here I also started to, uh, you know, uh, write down associations I have with a given tempo sort of like the same way um, you attach uh, you know a certain um, feeling to an interval for example the fifth the fourth the sixth um, the same with tempos right what does a, cer a specific tempo mean to you what uh, does it make you feel does it some tempos feel like they want to move forward other tempos feel like they want to lay back, right? And it's also very personal, just like with um, with other things in music, harmony and melody. So um, the highlighted numbers are numbers that you can find on a standard metronome. So that's why they, they're highlighted. Um, and 
This is a special tempo, like I mentioned earlier, because uh, 60 beats per minute is exactly a second. So that, that's something we're very uh, used to feeling. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna share that chart later and um, play around with it, pick a tempo, you know, uh, could be, um, you know, giant steps, super fast, and um, set the metronome at, you know, every four bars, every nine, every eight bars, um, every three beats, that's another thing. So, you know, I want to just uh, get into that a little bit too. That's also very useful and fun. And um, so I have, uh, let's stick with the same tempo. So um, if I set it at 40, well, that's still on the standard metronome. Um, we have a click on every third beat, every three beats, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And so on. So, you know, that's another uh, great exercise is to sing uh, bebop heads with this, with these exercises. Um, so, you know, every third beat, so it would be one, two, three, four. Okay, so um, the same idea with every five beats, you know, so um, if I set the metronome to 48, I have a click on every fifth beat, right? Uh, sorry, no, that's that's not true. 24. And for that, I need uh, the metronomics app. So set it at 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And um, it's also really helpful to uh, to know um, where each of the where each of these these uh, clicks land because um, you can actually also practice resolving your phrases on those beats but before I get into that actually let me um, let me let me play with this one four one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four <laughs> So um, what I mean by resolving phrases um, on the beat that has the click on it, um, so you know because we have a click every fifth, every five beats, um, the first click is going to be on beat one, and then the next click is going to be on beat two of the second bar, and the next one is going to be on beat three of the third bar, and then beat four of the fourth bar. So it's actually a very, you know, very easy pattern. Um, so um, you can accent that in your playing, knowing that um, you'll have these resolution points accented by the metronome, right? So, um, which is something that you should, um, that's that's uh, important to practice too. So you want to be able to uh, resolve a phrase 
uh, on any beat of the bar, right? Uh, and there, there are other exercises for that too, but this is great because it cycles through um, the different beats of the bar, right? So let's try that. One. One, two, three, four. So I was resolving and accenting um, the beat that the click was on. Um, I hope that makes sense. And uh, you can always rewatch it if I'm moving too fast. Um, but, you know, if you uh, start doing it and just, just um, you know, get into it, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean. So, um, you know, having the metronome click on every five beats is, is harder, obviously, than every three beats. So start with that. Um, okay, uh, I'd like to move on, but um, just to recap. So set the metronome, quarter note, one of these tempos, then uh, split it in half, then split it in half again, split it in half again, as low as you can go right see if you can get it to one of the single digits and still feel the tempo and still be you know uh together with the metronome that's the that's the goal that's the idea and um these help the you know these classic jazz recordings at those tempos uh that you probably have in your ear because you you've heard them so many times okay uh at this point i'm going to i'm going to move away from the um from the exercises, from the metronome exercises. So uh, again, at any point, if you have questions, just ask away or um, put them in the chat. Um, okay, so um, okay, so what I would like to get into now a little bit is uh, groupings. So. Um, I have a sheet for that too, accent groupings. Okay. All right. Um, you should be seeing a sheet now that says accent groupings in 4-4. So um, we're going to get into subdivisions and groupings a little bit, um, starting with uh, um, you know fairly simple ones and then getting into uh, quintuplet and septuplets a little bit. So um, the idea is to, to group uh, continuous notes in threes and fours and fives and, and sevens. Okay, so some of those you might be um, you might be familiar with. Other ones are you need some practice. And um, if you look at the top, so practice with the metronome on one and three for even eights, um, and two and four for swing eights. So it's always good to practice it in both fields, even and and swung. Um, so uh, count the beats out loud. So that's another thing I, um, for a long time, did not do. So um, I think everybody has a little bit of a different um, history and drummers maybe, maybe do that um, early on. But counting the beats out loud while you're playing or clapping. I would always, you know, clap the, the pulse and then sing the rhythm on top of that. So um, now it's time for me to do the reverse and um, 
count the beats out loud and and clap the rhythm so if you're one of those um, it's really uh, it's really it's a really good practice to always practice a rhythm both ways right counting the time one two three four and clapping the rhythm and then reverse it and um, clap the time and sing the rhythm right so uh, we're gonna do that with the first one and that's just um, that's just even eighth notes so metronome on one and three let's see oh, it's, all right 72 Oh no, that's too fast. So this is this is our half note. One, two, three, four, 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 two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That, 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 So, what I did, I started out counting and clapping the rhythm, and then at some point I switched it around and I clapped and I sang the rhythm and clapped the pulse. Right, so always practice it both ways. So, um, uh, so let me talk a little bit about sp singing the rhythms or speaking the rhythms. I like to use um, the uh, Salkatu or, or South Indian syllables, which um, I'm sure some of you are aware of and and know them. But um, I'm just gonna go over those real quick well actually let's let's do it as we go so uh takita takita is a grouping of three right so i use takita for groupings of three so let's do the same thing and um with takita right two three four one two three four takita 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 um next one is groups of five so five is tadiginaton uh or tadinginaton um you can also count one two three four five or uh just use one syllable um, so let's try that one. One, two, three, four. Tadigina, 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 Ta. Okay, so um, let's try the reverse where we count and clap the rhythm, right? So one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so always do it both ways. Always do the reverse too. And for some people, um, it's easier to speak the rhythms and clap the time. For other people, it's actually easier the reverse. I don't know. It, I think it has to do with what you practice when you first start out. Um, Okay, so next up are triplets. So triplets in groups of four. Um, the syllables for four is takadimi, or you can use one to three, four. 
I'm going to slow it down a little bit or actually put it on um, on every beat. Put the metronome on every beat, right? So triplets are and this is a special rhythm because it's actually uh, cycles back on itself within one bar right so um, it's a polyrhythm that's uh, just one bar long. If you look at all the other ones, they need at least two bars to, to cycle back onto themselves. And um, this rhythm is also uh, related to the half note triplet. So if you just look at the accents, you get a half note triplet. And um, now the other, the other examples in that line start on on the second and third triplets and on beat two. So you have four different versions of this rhythm and they're all important because they, uh, you will come across them um, a lot, right? So triplets that start on beats other than beat one, very common in jazz. Um, so let's, let's quickly go through the other ones. Um, one, two, three, four. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Next one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Last one. One, two, Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Taka di. So, uh, it starts on B two. So, one, taka di, 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 taka. Right. And they all feel different. And um, um, actually, before we move on with these, um, I actually I want to show you something else. Um, let me see. Okay, here it is. Uh, I want to I want to show you how these rhythms are related to uh, to the half note triplet, right? So here we have um, half note triplets in four four, and it's basically uh, the same thing that we just did, but written out in standard notation and um, not as uh, groupings, not as um, continuous notes, but um, as a half note triplet rhythm. So um, this is also really great to practice. Um, basically the same thing, right? So the first and, and um, first rhythm is um, one, one, two, three, four. The second one, one, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Next one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Last one. 
three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And they all have um, have um, their own personality, sort of. And um, that comes from the resolution point again, what I talked about earlier. Very important. Um, and for uh, for how a phrase feels, it's it's even more important than where the phrase starts. It's where the phrase resolves, right? And um, these phrases resolve. Um, the first one on beat one, the second one on beat two, the third one on beat three, and the fourth one on beat four. So that so the whole rhythm. Um, is is moving towards that resolution point and that's very important for you to understand these phrases right and that's true for every rhythmic phrase whether we do quintuplets or or um, triplets um, or groupings they all have a resolution point that they move towards right so let's take the last one again a very common uh, resolution point in jazz is beat four you know like um, a lot of uh, a lot of rhythms resolve on beat four so this one goes really well with with those and it's it's it feels really good especially in a in a swing feel right so let's um, let's make this two and four right one two three four 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 right so um i recommend you spend some time with these um so at the bottom i just wrote them out again with alternating long and short so that's that's just something you can do to uh, further get into these rhythms is alternate long and short um which you know with clapping <laughs> it's hard it's hard to do uh but uh i don't know you how you clap a long note I don't know. so um you know but on your instrument um you can play you can alternate between long and short rhythms you know so you know the do, let's let's do the let's do the first one. So one, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Right? So uh also great uh, little uh, meditation if you do that you know slow tempo for a long time uh, and really get into it and um, feel feel the resolution points um, all right uh, let's move on to some other stuff um, Yeah, those those accent groupings. Um, well, let me just go back to that and, and really quickly um, talk about talk about the rest of those rhythms. Okay, so we did the triplets. We did the we did the eighth notes. Uh, quintuplets in groups of three. Quintuplets in groups of four. Um, so quintuplets, I like to use tadiginatum for, um, for fives and, uh, groups of three takita, or you can just go one, two, three. Maybe let's, let's, let me do that for now. So, um, again, set the metronome at a slow tempo where you can, where you can really feel the quintuplets. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. Oh, this is even too fast. So this is 40. 
One, two, three, four, five. 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 Ta ding gi na ton. 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 One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So, if you're not um, that familiar with quintuplets, just sit with those for you know without any accents for a while. Just just really meditate on the quintuplets. Ta ding gi. Ta ding gi na ta ta ding gi na ta ta ding gi na ta. One two three four five. One two three four five. And then uh, in groups of three, one two three four five. 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 One. Two, three, four, five. I'm slowing down. Let's let's try that again. And also, I'm going to clap all the um, all the subdivisions and then accent. One two three four five. One two three four five. Ta ding gi. Tadding, and actually what I like to do as an in-between step if you if you uh, do these groupings you can still um, you can group it in three and you um, use takita but you still accent the downbeat of every bar so that's sort of like a uh, like a crutch it helps you um, not get not lose track of the downbeat, right? Which is important, right? So let me do that for a second. So you go ta ding gi na ta ta ding gi na ta ki ta 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 ta and um, you do that for a while, and when you feel comfortable, you do away with the accents on the downbeats, and you uh, you're just left with the accent on every on every third quintuplet, right? Taki ta 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 ta. Okay, so that's the process, right? If you do these 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 higher tuplets like quintuplets and septuplets, you spend some time with just the tuplet itself, quintuplets, whatever you're doing, get into it, and then um, you um, you sing or speak the groupings, either one two three or takita, and you accent the downbeats still in your speaking, and then the next step is. You're just speaking the the subdivisions, the accents. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, if not, um, you can you can ask me questions anytime. We won't do the septuplets because I also quickly want to uh, okay get into something else. Um, So, yeah, this is something I put together. Um, I'm going to share it. Okay, so it, this is a matrix of combinations of meters, tuplets, and groupings, right? So, um, you have a meter, 4, 4. 3, 4, 5, 4, or 7, 4. Um, you have a tuplet. You have, uh, 2, well, 2 is really not a tuplet. It's just an eighth note. Then you have uh, a triplet, a quintuplet, and septuplet. And then you have groupings. Groupings of 2, 3, 5, and 7. So these are all the combinations of those um, meter, tuplet, and groupings. So when I practice these, I just pick one, 
and and try to get into it right so um what we just did was uh quintuplets in four four grouped in in three right so that that would be this one four five three so we have we're in four four we have quintuplets and we're grouping them in three right that's what we just did but there are lots of other possibilities on combinations that you can practice and uh some are easier some are harder um i crossed out the redundant ones obviously quintuplets and groups of five uh doesn't make sense so i crossed those out but all the other ones um are fair game and and great to practice so um I'm not sure if I can share two pages at once, but um, I just wanted to show you an example of uh, a tune that I wrote that's based on one of those uh, one of those rhythms. So it, it's just really um, the whole tune is basically uh, a rhythm, uh, and it's it's a short tune. Mm. Okay, it's called Furin, and um, if you look at the time signature, it's in 4-4, four, four. and um, it's triplet-based, as you can see, and um, the triplets are grouped in five, right? So on that, on that matrix I just showed you, that would be meter is four, subdivision is three and the grouping is five so four three five right so um i wanted to just uh quickly show you what it sounds like so this is uh yeah i i don't think i can share the music and the and the video at the same time so um just just keep in mind it's a um the tune is in 4-4, four, four, right? It's triplet based, as you can see. And um, it's the grouping is, is, is five. So based on this rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Right? So that's the uh, melodic rhythm. So as you can see here, quarter note, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, quarter note, eighth note, and so on, throughout the whole eight bars, right? So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing this and um, I'm gonna uh, pull up the, the recording and um, we can just uh, listen for a little bit and see if you can get get into that rhythm and see if you can hear the 4-4 four, four. I mean at times the drummer is you know very clearly playing the 4 and also um, see if you can hear the triplet subdivision and um, see if you can hear the grouping of 5 on top of that right so um, I'm actually going to quickly go back uh, one more time because I want to um, I want to show you something else. So this is uh, on top of that. It also has uh, it's grouped melodically into four notes, right? So if you look at this, you have four ascending notes, right? So it actually it shifts within the grouping. So uh, for us. You know melodic if, if you play a pitched instrument you can also you have different ways of grouping a rhythm you can group it by accenting uh, the first note or you can group it in um, uh, you know in a melodic fashion so if you, if you just you know uh, so that you know this rhythm in 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 triplets would be uh, you know Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. 
So that's a rhythmic grouping of five, right? But because we can play different pitches, you can also group it in four on top of that, right? Let me actually use the pitches um, in this tune. So it would be one, two, three, four. Do you hear that, how that is grouped in five rhythmically and in four melodically? So um, actually you have, uh, that means you have an additional layer to, um, to those three layers in, in the matrix that I showed you. Uh, but um, we're almost done. I'd like to listen for a little bit, um, but also uh, look at the pages, uh, Stephen, uh, uh, sorry, the chat. Um, yeah i'll i'll um what i'll do if if you can um so the chat is not public so put your uh, put your email address in the chat and what i'll do is i'll send you an email with these charts um so we, whoever is here um whoever is here in the zoom class uh put in your email uh, and whoever's watching online, um, if you want the charts, you can email me at uh, sebnoel at gmail.com, sebnoel gmail.com. Send me an email and I'll, I will uh, send you the charts. Okay, so unless there are any more questions, I would just like to... Um, Play this recording and um, see if you can hear those. I think of it as wheels, right? So you have the big wheel, which is the meter. You have a smaller wheel, which is the tuplet, the subdivision. Or if it's just eighth notes, then um, that's still a subdivision, right? And then you have a smaller wheel that is the grouping, right? Um, so I encourage you to uh, you know, use those to practice those first of all to strengthen your rhythm, but also use them for your uh, compositions. They're really fun little, um, uh, um, you know, whatever you want to call them, meditations um, to get into. So this is uh, this is fooding.
idea so um, it's the same rhythm throughout the whole tune okay um, well thanks everybody for tuning in for listening for being here I hope you uh, you feel inspired you got something out of this um, again like I said if if you feel like you know this is not you know um, this is not something that you would be playing uh, with your own group or, or uh, on a gig it's still really uh, useful and um, the funny thing about rhythm is if you strengthen your rhythm in you know in one meter or in one part or one tempo it actually helps you improve in 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 the rest of your um, in your overall rhythmic feel right so um, you know practice for example practicing quintuplets will strengthen your feel uh, playing in 4-4 four four, playing in you know just just the straight 4-4 four four, just eighth notes uh, it's funny how that works but um, it's 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 about rhythmic authority if you feel like you know it's also about being able to interpret what the musicians around you are playing so um, somebody might be playing one of these groupings that does not start start on beat one and you don't want that to to throw you off right so if you're the kind of person who who you know even if you know you you know you you play you play a certain way but somebody around you might play a completely different way and um, you don't want that to throw uh, to throw you off so very useful for that too uh, all right thanks everybody and um, again if you want to rewatch it'll be on YouTube on the New York Jazz Workshop channel thanks to the New York Jazz Workshop um, and if you feel uh, feel like supporting them it's a great organization um, they have a they have a GoFundMe page because um, you know they we're all uh, we're all in dire straits these days so um, if you feel like supporting them um, find them on GoFundMe thanks again have a good weekend everybody take care